the star of Pirates of the Caribbean. Hard to starboard! <laughs> I know I am. I've got a good one for you tonight. Uh, yes, the one and only Johnny Depp is here. <laughs> That's not all. Oscar nominee Carrie Mulligan is here. <laughs> Top Irish comic Ed Byrne is on the show. <laughs> Writer, director, and actor Ricky Gervais is here. Snow Patrol! It's a line up, isn't it? That's a good show. And of course, thrilled to have Ricky Gervais back on the show. Uh, Ricky's got a new comedy series out called Life's Too Short. Now, uh, the show. <laughs> it's a hit, Ricky! Uh, the show follows the life of a showbiz dwarf. You do think, what does Ricky know about that? <laughs> Mulligan. Oh, Carrie Mulligan's here. Now, uh, obviously, she was Oscar nominated for an education, and uh, she's just finished a new film called Shame. Mm. It's all about a young sex addict. I think we all know who that's based on. Yes. <laughs> mm hmm. Who knew Justin Bieber liked sex? <laughs> he wasn't that keen when I asked him. <laughs> about it. About the subject. Justin, Justin has been accused of fathering a child after a backstage romp that lasted 30 seconds. Aww. Justin by name, Justin by nature. <laughs> hey, hey. I'm delighted to welcome Johnny Depp onto this show. Now, I should warn you, I should warn you that as I speak, he's on his way from the premiere of his new film, The Rum Diary. Uh, in the film, Johnny's character spends most of his time drinking rum. <laughs> so many different kinds of rum. Uh, dark rum, white rum, red rum. <laughs> <laughs> he was a racehorse in the 80s. <laughs> uh, Johnny is probably most famous as Captain Jack Sparrow in the Pirates of the Caribbean. <gasps> there he is. What a... Now, those films, they are fun, but I, I do find them quite frightening. I do. Do you remember the Kraken? The Kraken? A huge man-eating squid? Now, don't be frightened, but here is a huge man-eating squid. Yeah. <laughs> it's a huge man eating squid. <laughs> Let's get some guests on! Sit down, and what a guy! It's comedy superstar Ricky Gervais! <laughs> Woo! Hello, Tom! Well, it's a tuxedo. Very nice. Everyone looking lovely. Gorgeous shoes. The shoes. Look at the shoes. Very high. They are amazing, those shoes. Now, listen, uh, I just want to check before Mr. Depp does arrive. That there's got to be no awkwardness on the sofa, because I know in the Golden Globes <laughs> you were you were less than kind. Uh -huh. uh, Johnny and Angelina's film. It, wouldn't you? I haven't seen this one. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's, I haven't seen that one. I still haven't. <laughs> didn't, it didn't, it didn't stop me though. Did it? <laughs> well, he'll be all right though, won't he? Of course he'll be all right. Okay. I, I didn't. I, 
I didn't buy the controversy really with the Golden Globes. I think that was the press just keeping it going. Because I who was really offended? Who did I really offend? You know. I, I was there. I think you offended quite a few people. <laughs> 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 I, 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 this, this was ridiculous. He's in the new show, you know, um, and everyone was going, oh, he insulted everyone. Johnny Depp was furious. So I sent him an email and said, um, uh, sorry about the Globes. Um, how would you like to get your own back? And he went, I loved it. I wasn't, of course I wasn't annoyed. You know, it's ridiculous. It's like... Oh, right. He wasn't annoyed at all. So was Angelina Jolie in Life's Too Short as well? I didn't ask her. She didn't look so happy. <laughs> Kerry, Kerry, you, uh, you blame Johnny Depp for ruining your hair. Um, no, I played um, a tiny prostitute part in Public Enemies for a day. You don't mean a dwarf prostitute. <laughs> 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 you played a tiny prostitute. <laughs> I played a, a tiny prostitute part in Public Enemies where they convinced me to dye my hair white and thus it all fell out. No, and didn't Did you I have to kiss him a lot? I did kiss him several times, but it got cut from the film. Mm. No, I mean, I don't kiss him. I mean, yes, very nice. Poor <laughs> oh, Johnny Depp. How many times did you kiss him? How many times? I think it was 16, because I was so uncomfortable. Like, oh, 16. But it got cut out? It got cut, because I looked so uncomfortable. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I was kissing Johnny Depp, so I got really <laughs> I, Who could blame you? And, uh, Ed, do you have a beef with Johnny Depp? Apart from the fact that he stole my look. I get fed up with the being, being, being confused with them all the time. It's very annoying. So, <laughs> speaking of American trust, that's, that's, there's Ed. <laughs> yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> have, you got, have you got one of Johnny Vegas for me? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> Right, Kerry Mulligan. Uh, I love what's happened to you. It's just fabulous. Every now and again, it happens to someone where no one knew you. Suddenly, you're nominated for Oscars. You are the it girl. You're the hottest actress on planet Earth right now. And so, are you sort of comfortable with all this yet? No, I feel like I've won an audience award to sit next to these two. So I'm no, not at all. I, it's very strange. And what's extraordinary is that apart from the odd school play, your first ever job was Pride and Prejudice, with yeah. Judy Dench and Brendan Bethan and people. Yeah. Oh, there I am. Oh, ooh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I... Better now. I feel... <laughs> I feel... <laughs> Success has changed you. Uh, <laughs> the best, I feel. Yes. Um, yeah, it was. It was my first job. I giggled a lot. I didn't do an awful lot. But... And now, you've got... I mean, so many people wanted this role, but you are playing Daisy Buchanan in The Great Gatsby, opposite Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes. <laughs> Is it a bit the Johnny Depp thing? Because you were a Leo fan, or are a Leo fan, I presume. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I grew up watching everything he'd ever done. It's difficult. I have to hide my inner fan when I'm around him. I mean, it's, it's terrible. He claims to not be able to dance when we're doing a dancing scene, and I have to hide the fact that I know that he can dance, because I've seen him dance in Titanic. <laughs> and I want to make him tap dance, but I don't. So I kind of suppress it. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 you're, you're a crap dancer. And I sort of sit there, but he's amazing. It'd be great if they wrote that into the dialogue. That'd be a really funny scene in the film if you were to say to the great Catherine, yeah, but I saw you dance in Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going back to Australia very soon to finish that film, which is sort of why you're here tonight to talk about shame. Because yes. actually, it doesn't really come out till January the 13th. Yes. I can tell you, because I know it's written down. <laughs> <laughs> and now, I've, I've seen the previous film. It is an amazing film. It's, it's a very different film. Yeah. And for an audience member, it's extreme. So I'm assuming to be in it was quite an extreme experience. It's a little bit racy. It is, because it deals with addiction, but a particular sort of addiction in the film. Sex. <laughs> it does. Michael Fassbender's character is, is addicted. He is. Yeah, so, yeah. He's a what? Addicted. <laughs> oh, he's addicted. Sorry, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Think you're being a bit harsh about the poor man? <laughs> I'm talking around the is film. Is there really sex addiction? Because I was the only other time I hear that is when they go, "I'm sex addicted." And they, what they mean is I got caught, so now I've got to go to the priory to say sorry. Is there really? Is there really sex addiction? When you watch this film, you do sort of think, it, "Yes, it lays him quite low." Right. Okay. I would say yes. 
And the other thing I love is that, like, lots of actors, they kind of moan about the transitory lifestyle, having to live in hotels, and da da. But presumably, you quite like it because you you grew up in hotels. I did. My dad was. My dad's here. I can't see him though. But my dad's here. He um. He Keeping was a very hotel quiet manager. now. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Was a, a um, hotel manager, so we grew up in hotels. Is it a nice life? Because presumably you don't have to clean up or anything. It's, well, yeah, it's very nice. I mean, I didn't know anything else when did, I was. Did you ever have like an argument with your parents where they go, "You treat this house like a hotel"? Oh. <laughs> 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 and how old were you when you got out of hotels? So, uh, Dad. Thirty. No, not no, because we moved into. So I stopped talking to my dad. <laughs> so you're allowed to talk to your father? Oh. It's all right. No, but when we moved back to <clears throat> London, it was like when I was like seven and a half. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this comfortable for you? This comfortable? <laughs> <laughs> is this more or less comfortable than watching the film with your daughter in bed sex and <laughs> Oh, actually, has your dad seen it? No, dad's not allowed. No. Can I just say, I'm not a father, but really don't see it. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Imagine a father enjoying it. <laughs> I'm, I'm embarrassed for you. I mean, there's nothing it's worse. It's very than that. good. <laughs> and if she's nominated for an Oscar, you can go to that and you'll enjoy that. It'll be great. I, I don't before. watch other people having sex with my mum and dad. So. <laughs> <laughs> other people having sex with your mum and dad? <laughs> Listen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, apparently uh, Johnny Depp will be here very shortly, I'm told. <laughs> A lot of love in the room. A few Depp fans in the, in the audience. And Ed, uh, when, you, when you're touring, because you're touring at the moment. Yeah. Uh, very quickly, very quickly, I'm just going to ask you, because every time I do ask, do you still have the vile cat? Yeah, I have still have, yeah, a cat, yeah. He's not, he's not that vile, but he does bring in horrible things. He brings in things and he's, it's a bit disgusting, yeah. He seems worse than most cats. He's very good at bringing stuff in from outside. But, yeah. but didn't you bring in a pheasant? A live pheasant. <laughs> yeah. A live yeah. pheasant? That's the biggest thing he's brought in still alive. Oh, good! Yeah, which does make sense he's brought in bigger things than that dead. <laughs> a bison. <laughs> Two wolves and a postman. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but yeah, he brought in, it, was, it was one of those things, because I... All right, have you ever had, like, a blue tit? Or a chaffage? Like, a little bird, like, get in your house, right? They suddenly seem massive. Yeah. Suddenly you're being terrorised by this winged beast. See a pheasant. They're big outside, right? They're, they're big in your garden. See, when yeah. you're in your living room, they're enormous. Because <laughs> certain things seem bigger inside than they do outside. And you ladies would do well to bear that in mind. <laughs> but no, it's the funniest thing. And it's pheasant, which incidentally wasn't keen on moving out once it had tasted the high life of Casa Burn. I come down, I'm just looking at the cat like I'm annoyed with him. But I'm also quite impressed that he's done this. And he's looking back at me like he's impressed with himself. But he's also quite scared. Like, the cat's just looking at me going... I oh, know it's massive, isn't it? <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I thought it was big when it was outside. It's cute. <laughs> anyway, I got you this. <laughs> you don't want to put it on eBay. I don't really give a shit. I bet you brought home some terrible stuff. In there. <laughs> what say? It's my house. <laughs> Loud. <laughs> uh, so, Ed, uh, you're on tour now till the 9th of December, and the yeah. DVD of that tour is out on the 28th of this month. <gasps> but wait a moment. Do I hear the clinking of rum bottles? The buckling of swash? <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen, he's here. Hotfoot from the premiere of The Rum Diary. Please welcome Johnny Depp. <laughs> Is that enjoyable? Is that that was a nice <laughs> feeling? It's a lovely feeling. Well, it's never expected. It's a sort of a yeah. No, it's a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you've just come to the premiere. How was that? Was it going well? It was good. Yeah, very good. And the crowd showed up and did that. The screaming. 
There was a bit of a uh, crowd, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did it get us out of hand? Because there's a picture, I'm sure you've seen, the picture from the New York premiere of The Rum Diary. What went on? What, what's happening what's that? in that picture? That was the uh, Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> I had something lodged. <laughs> what, for real? <laughs> no, no. Really, no. <laughs> You were just being manhandled by somebody for some reason. I was. Okay, fair enough. Okay. <laughs> I have pressed charges. <laughs> and listen, we're delighted you're here. But to be honest, I'm surprised you're here so quickly because it seems you're you are so lovely to your fans. Like the, the story of you as Captain Jack going to see that little girl in Greenwich. Oh, in Greenwich. Yeah. That's an amazing story. If oh. I, I, uh, <laughs> for people who aren't familiar, tell, tell us what happened. Well, I got a letter, you know, I got this sweet little letter from, uh, from a little girl who was going to school, like, three minutes away from where we were shooting. And she said, you know, we need to escape, you know, we need pilots to help us out. So I thought, well, on lunch break, we'll go over, bring about 12 pilots and, and go ape. <laughs> and, uh, and we did. And uh, it, was, it was really fun and really sweet. I mean, the kids were so... Well, some, were scared. Scared. some were scared. Very scared. <laughs> Actually, very scared. Because the thing that I mean, how the hell did that letter get to you? In a bottle. Anyway, <laughs> 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 uh, right, let's talk about uh, the Rum Diary. Uh, presumably, a real labour for love of you. You found the original manuscript. Was it 14 years? 14 years, yeah. It was by accident, you know. I was, I was with Hunter Thompson. And we were looking through the manuscript of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, where because uh, I was preparing for the film. And then I just found this other box, opened it up, and there was the Rum Diary. And is it he didn't remember writing it? Hmm. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a stretch. No, he remembered. <laughs> he did remember writing it, but it had been many years. He wrote it in '59, '60, something like that. So you convinced him. I talked him into it. Yeah. This should be published and, mm -hmm. and turned into a film. Yeah. And, and is it? It's presumably kind of semi-autobiographical. About Most it. definitely, yeah. 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 So it was kind of the Hunter Thompson before he found his voice, before he found the avenue for the rage, you know. And so he was a journalist in Puerto Rico and going through these adventures. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And you, you were good friends with Hunter Andre, uh, S. Thompson. Most definitely, yeah. But it sounds, reading about him, he sounds like the sort of person quite hard to be. Fred, like, how, could you relax with him? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, well, yeah. Tell us about the first time you ever met him. Uh, let's see. The first time I met him, I was in a, a, um, <clears throat> it was a bar in um, Woody Creek, Colorado. And I was sitting in the back. It was a sort of a scheduled meeting. It was about midnight. And I was sitting in the back of this bar. And suddenly, the front door opened of the bar. I was way in the back. And I saw sparks, these hideous sparks. They were kind of everywhere. And then I realized as he came closer, the sea was parting. Um, <laughs> people screaming, hurling themselves out of the way. And uh, he, he, he basically, in his left hand, he had a, um, a three-foot cattle prod. And in his right hand, he had a taser gun. <laughs> and the next thing I heard was, out of the way, you bastards. And the sea parted, and he arrived. <laughs> and then we shook hands, and then we went back to his house and built a bomb. <laughs> and I, 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 I shot it with a shotgun. And it went off? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you built a good bomb. 80 foot fireball, yeah. Huge. See, it does Nit sound like fun. Nitroglycerin and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds yeah. like fun, but again, I just, <laughs> I just, I wouldn't relax. I think. <laughs> I wouldn't sleep in that house. You slept in the house. Where, what, it wasn't a council house. Where was it? <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I was going to invite you back to mine after this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think I'd be disappointed. I don't think you'd blow my room up. No, I can bring things to blow up. Oh, I do. <laughs> do come. Strap something to the cat. <laughs> and Hunter. Look what the cat's brought him. He's doing that. He looks so big the... in the house. Yeah. <laughs> and when he died, the ashes thing, was that your idea? Were those his, his wishes that in his will? That was his last wish. What, he, what, what Hunter wanted was to be um, blown out of a 150 foot cannon. <laughs> And shot into the stratosphere. And uh, I think he knew that I was the only one stupid enough to make that happen. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> did it work? Oh, yeah. 
Very well. It's a very funny film, but it's also it's a romantic film. A, a, she is so beautiful. Amber Heard. Amber Heard. Yeah, it's like a sort of a callback to like you know the old school movie stars yeah. of. You know, she's nearly as beautiful as Carrie Mulligan. Nearly. She's right on yeah, the verge. Yeah. On the verge. Yeah. They're, they're, they're yeah. She neck neck I walked into a room with Amber Heard last week and I almost fell over. <laughs> She's, uh, I, didn't, uh, I couldn't look her in the eye. She's sort of blinding. She really is beautiful. Yeah. Even I noticed. She's incredibly beautiful. <laughs> She's, yeah. She's incredibly beautiful. She really is. Uh, now, it strikes me that in, in the beginning of your career, you must have had so much pressure to go down the kind of handsome leading man route. And yeah. was, it, was it hard to kind of resist that? <laughs> You, are, you answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's been tough on Ricky. <laughs> it has. He suffers. How's his pal? He does suffer. Do, do, do your pal. Come on, do it. What pal? What pal? Come on. <laughs> no, I need more. <laughs> the pal you stole off me. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I really love your band. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I really do. I appreciate that. Travis Cocker, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Cocker from Blur. <laughs> <laughs> More stars than there are in heaven. It's incredible. Because <laughs> uh, I think what's amazing about you is that you have turned by being a, a real kind of character actor into, well, like, you're the best character actor in the world. Well, you are. You so, Lord, man. Well, because most character actors, <laughs> most character actors, most character actors are kind of also appearing. You've turned being a character actor into a, a global superstar. No, thing. I think it's more like a, uh, some some form of schizophrenia that has just worked for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> because those characters they're so big, the Captain J Jack Sparrows and Willy Wonka and Mad Hatter and things. Do you come to the set with those fully formed? Or do you work with the director, or do, how, how does it happen that you create those? Yeah, generally they're born out of whatever they're born out of, you know. I've, I've had, you know, characters born out of, uh, don't get excited, the sauna, you know, being an extreme... Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can feel him coming on, can't you? <laughs> don't pick on me. <laughs> the audience are always going to be on your side. <laughs> You know, these characters that are born out of, you know, sort of strange, you know, extreme heat or whatever, you know, th these thoughts and stuff, and you bring it to set, and then there's what I enjoy, really, is this sort of um, extreme quiet at the end of the first take, you know. You hear action, you go and do your bit, and then suddenly you hear, cut. So does that give you pleasure when the studio executives are kind of like, oh, of my... Course, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I think that's the only way you know you're doing the right thing. And so do they literally have that conversation with you? Are you doing that for the whole film? Or... <laughs> it generally starts with what is wrong with you. <laughs> What's happened? What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, it's horrible, isn't it? But you come with... You know, you know the, the kind of... No, you're just swinging. You have, a, you have a, you know, a big stick and you start swinging it kind of thing. And you just hope that it'll be all right. He broke a window, yeah, sort of. <laughs> he threw oh, a did. lemon through a window. I did. I smashed did, I the did. window. I did. I, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Let me tell you, Johnny. Everything's he's shy, okay. Um, but he wasn't shy this day, and he's got, he's got a wicked sense of humour. If people knew what he was really like, his career would be over. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in one scene. <laughs> Um, I'm helping, uh, I'm sort of helping Warwick get shoved down the toilet, as you do, right? And I'm sort of bending his legs in, I'm going, it's all right. If, I said, if it breaks, we'll get another one in, right? <laughs> and I'm pushing him down the toilet and I'm laughing and Warwick's laughing. And at one point, Warwick goes, look at Johnny! I turn round and Johnny Depp is going, you don't mind if I masturbate while you're doing that? <laughs> And someone took a picture of the moment, but he'd stopped by then, so it's just... Oh, okay, I think we've got the, I think we've got the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you're laughing so much? Yeah, he'd, just, he'd just been doing it then. Yeah, but I'd, I'd finished by then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs>
Now, uh, so you are in Life is Too Short, the picture we saw there. Yes. Uh, it starts on 10th of November, and you're in episode two. So, Ricky, is it fair to say this is more like extras than The Office? Um, it's sort of a cross between the two, really. It's a fake documentary, like The Office, but it's uh, at the backdrop of media, like extras. That's, but if um, The Office sort of reflected those quaint docu-soaps of the 90s where normal people were trying to be famous, like David Brent, you know, this is much more up to date, where it's sort of D-list celebrities living their life like an open wound to try and be on... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And Warwick, the Warwick... Just say Warwick. it, like Peter Andre. <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> <laughs> like Peter Andre, I go won't. on. I won't diss anyone. <laughs> um, and uh, I suppose it's, um, he's, he's got a terrible um, accountant, so he's got a, a tax bill. His career's on the slide, he's not getting the films anymore. He's going through a messy divorce, so he agrees to do this fly on the wall, let the cameras into his house 24-7 to try and get back on the top. And he's, he's manipulative, he runs an agency, but he steals all the best jobs for himself and he just lets out the other dwarfs for, you know, <laughs> human bowling balls and stuff. <laughs> and Johnny um, um, is uh, playing himself and he's doing a new Tim Burton film, um, Rumpelstiltskin, and he's playing a, a dwarf. So he wants to get in the head of a little person. What's oh, it, you're <laughs> playing the war? Yeah. <laughs> okay. and, uh, honestly, it was an incredible day. It was the last day of shooting, and um, uh, it, was, it was amazing. And Warwick. the things he came up with, making Warwick do, he made him do Michael Flatley. He came out of nowhere and just going... <laughs> and made him dance, and he made Warwick dance for about eight minutes. <laughs> you're not shy. Uh, you, you do like... I don't know if you like... Do you like getting into trouble? Do you like... I don't get into trouble. I'm, well, I'm a comedian. Fred West gets into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> There's paedophiles with careers. What have I ever done? <laughs> no, but even at the end... <laughs> even at the end of the Golden Globes, just in yeah. case you'd left anyone unoffended, uh, how did you sign off? I just thanked everyone and I said, and of course, thanks to God for making me an atheist. <laughs> Which you can say here, but in yeah. America they take that stuff very seriously. Well, yeah, I think it's, it's sort of, um, I think it's about 10% atheist. I think here's about 45% atheist. But, um, yeah, they were offended by it. They thought it was... That's pretty... only because God lives in the Midwest, doesn't he? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's got a place there. Yeah. <laughs> was it the next day, was it after the Golden Globes, that you, someone sent you the picture of the church? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I think some, some reverend somewhere or some bishop, um, did a sermon for me to save my soul because I'm, I'm going to hell, of course. <laughs> this is a picture of the thing. It's yeah. a gen that's, that's real. Oh, it's real. No, it's real, yeah. yeah. A yeah. sermon for Ricky Gervais. Mm. <laughs> and then was it the same day or the next day that someone said... That's in LA. There's a difference. In New York, they named a sandwich after me. <laughs> <laughs> See, in the window there, a sandwich for Ricky Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hell, but there's cheese and ham. <laughs> That's what they're different. You are a comedian, da, da. but uh, as actors, I don't know, do you need to be more careful about what you say and do? Because Johnny, I heard, it, 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 presumably because you're Johnny Depp, uh, like I read a story about, was it because you were coming from Lima to Miami, I think, when you were stopped at customs? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and if you hadn't been Johnny Depp, they probably wouldn't have stopped you, would they? Well, it's kind of an interesting route anyway. Lima, Peru to Miami. <laughs> it does sound like a drug run. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're already expecting things, and uh, <clears throat> I did have some things. And, uh, yeah, there was a kind of a soft bag, and, and uh, the customs guy said, would you mind opening this up? And I said, he said, he said, first, he said, what is in there? I said, uh, stuffed piranhas. <laughs> said, Sorry, stuffed piranhas and some vampire bats. <laughs> Unzipped, and then there just happened to be some sort of vitamin powder that I was taking at the time. Yeah, I mean, in all seriousness. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'd still be in jail. <laughs> and and they, it, when I unzipped it, poof, you know. <laughs> and there were these piranhas and bats covered in white powder. <laughs> Why were these rough piranhas and bats? <laughs> never, never mind the cocaine, <laughs> right? <laughs> Sorry, we're over there. Um, what, why did you have piranhas and bats? Well, it was important to have them. <laughs> yeah, of course. Right. I had to bring them home. Yeah. But the guy thought he'd found the mother load, you know. He must have been so excited. Oh, God, it was... Oh. Ooh. After that. Two-hander. He didn't go through with it, just so you know. All right. <laughs> no, so was... what did you, how did you say... I'm you still a virgin. This? Oh, I was a virgin until Ricky... <laughs>
<laughs> did you say, do you say that's vitamin powder? Don't worry about it. And he believed you. Is that, is that real? Do they he really do did that? not believe me, no. No, right. So no, what do they no. do? Get... Everybody came out with guns and things like that. And you wow. Did you... <laughs> but did you put a knife in your... and go up the rigging? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'd have done. <laughs> but did, you were trouble at customs there, didn't you? Oh, cousin, I remember immigration in the States one time I was going in and I panicked because the guy goes like, uh, so what, what do you do? And I goes, I'm, I'm a comedian. So he straight away goes, well, tell me a joke. And I just panicked. Because I was like, if this joke isn't funny, he's not going to believe me and I can't get in. So it was like, <laughs> I was like oh, God. and I straight away go, uh, what do you call an American? Oh, no, that's gonna, not going to work. <laughs> uh, I was just like, oh, if I say something, there's like terrorism in her aunt like that. It's gonna, and I just, I just panicked and I, uh, I came out with a joke that wasn't that funny. I goes, I goes, uh, why do Morris dancers wear bells so the blind can be irritated by them as well? <laughs> Which, you know, he doesn't know what a Morris dancer is. <laughs> so, but he just he came back with what was basically the worst heckle I've ever had in my career, where he just went, I'm going to put actor. <laughs> Before we go tonight, let's have a story or two in the red chair. So, uh, who's up first? Hello, sir. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Mohammed. Okay, and what do you do, Mohammed? Uh, I'm, I'm a student. A student of? Radiography. Radiography? Yeah. A proper job. Okay. <laughs> uh, you well, when I was seven years old, I went on a holiday with my mother to Egypt. And um, during my time there, I saw a donkey that was fully erect. <laughs> Mohammed, do you mean do you mean he was standing up? <laughs> so what's the tell us your best story? I saw a donkey with an erection. <laughs> okay, so so you were shocked, Mohammed? I was shocked. So I put my mother and I was like, Mum, Mum, what's this thing hanging out? And then she said, It's a spare leg. <laughs> and then after that, I was like, What's it for? And then she replied, When donkeys are happy, they have five legs. And when they're sad, they only have four. <laughs> so a week after, I went back to school, and my teacher asked us to, to draw a picture of anything recent that we found interesting. <laughs> I, 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 I drew a good story. I, uh, I, drew, I, drew, I drew two pictures of a donkey. One was happy, and the other one was sad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mohammed. You can go. Well done, sir. Hello. Hi. Uh, what, what's your name? Uh, my name's Brooke. Brooke. And what do you do? Um, I work in PR. Oh, yes. Very vague. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go, Brooke, with your delightful tale. Okay. Um, I actually have a story about one of your guests. Uh oh. <laughs> um, I was riding the tube home from work one day, and I saw someone who looked suspiciously like a celebrity that I happened to adore. And um, he was wearing a stocking cap and some sunglasses, and I noticed that he had a tattoo on his arm that said, Jack. And I thought, oh my goodness. And I leaned over and I said, excuse me, are you who I think you are? And he looked up at me and he said, why yes, I'm uh, Brad Pitt. <laughs> Needless to say, it wasn't Brad Pitt, and um, I got a great photo with uh, Mr. Johnny Depp on the platform at Bank Station. Is that true? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, on the tube? Photo evidence is yeah, true. Yeah, on the tube. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think you true. were, Mr. Depp, you were with a, a BBC journalist. <laughs> oh, 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 I, I think you might just have a picture with some man. <laughs> Or, bizarrely, a picture with Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take a picture do now. it now. Oh, do you want a picture now? <laughs> okay, run out here. Run out <laughs> quick, quick, quick. Uh, I you. That's very nice of you. Run! Run, Brooke, run! Oh, oh. It's really nice to see you again. <laughs> Stand, toge stand together and we'll take a screen grab of you. There you go. And we'll get that to you. All right. Well done, Brooke. Very good. Well done, everyone. And if you'd like to join us on the show and have a go in the red chair, you can contact us via our website at this address. Uh, thank you so much to my guests tonight. Uh, Snow Patrol. Ed Byrne. Karen Mulligan. Ricky Gervais. And Johnny Depp. Lord Alan 
Sugar, X Factor is Kelly Rowland, and for the first time ever, Sir Cliff Richard will be here. Yeah. I'll see you then. Good night, everyone. Goodbye. And ahead of his new comedy next week, Ricky Gervais presents The Making of Life's Too Short tomorrow night at 10.15 on BBC Two. Coming next here on BBC One, are you feeling lucky with the National Lottery?